What do you see up there? It's on the altar, a little bit small, not too much better. We must need new equipment in this church already because it could be a little bit more focused, but that's the best we can do. Who is that? Any Catholics out there? <laughs> Who is that? Joseph. Joseph. Doing what? Holding the child, Jesus. I received that as a gift a couple of years ago. I've never seen this. And I keep it in my office and decided to pull it out today because who is the main character of the fourth Sunday of Advent, the gospel? Joseph. In your Christmas cards that you have received, the holy ones, the religious ones, do you, anybody get one of those? No. You did? You ruined my homily. <laughs> one person in this church got Joseph. Not Mary, just Joseph and the baby. You got one of those? Oh. <laughs> I've never seen it in a Christmas card. How about Mary and the baby? Big time. Madonna and child. Well, what about Joseph? What's he, what's he dog meat? Well, think about that. He is the character of the gospel today. Let's use this gospel today to reflect on not only Joseph, because we know very little about him, but Joseph as a role model for men and faith. Because so much of our understanding of religion and faith is it comes through women. It's nurtured in our mothers and in the feminine. Where is the masculine side of this whole equation? Joseph gives us perhaps a little bit, not a lot, but we have to use our imaginations to get into this. The one word that describes Joseph, he is a righteous man. Now righteous in the biblical sense is not self-righteous. Righteous means his relationships are intact. They are correct. The relationship with God is right. Probably the relationship with self, right. The relationship with others, right. Righteous means that the relationships are correct. Which means that he has a history as a believing person. Because of the past faith, and the, this gr growing and nurturing as a man of faith, he is now put in another situation which I think we can all relate to. He is in a situation, Mar we saw Mary's side of it in the Annunciation story. Here's Joseph now, who is betrothed to Mary. Now in the ancient tradition, uh, betrothal was the period, with the betrothal came the marriage, except they did not move in with each other uh, until a later period. But so the marriage is all ready, and now she's pregnant. According to the book, Joseph should quietly and discreetly get her out of the way because there has been an indiscretion and there has been an infidelity here. Well, he doesn't. And in a dream, he gets a message to do just the opposite, which he, from his commonsensical sense, would not have done. Take her and go with her. Did you ever wake up in the wee hours or when you're half awake, half asleep, and you're processing a lot of things, and for just a brief moment, you get an insight into, oh yeah. I w during my daylight hours, I'm so distracted now, for just a brief moment, I can see more clearly what's going on and what I need to do. We don't know how this happens. God can speak to us in any number of ways. The point is that we are receptive to the message. Because he has a history as a believing person, he is now able to deal with a situation where he's over his head and to trust that intuition that comes in his, the message 
go here, not here. And he does. He represents for us a man of faith. Now, the reason Joseph is brought into this picture is really kind of superficial. Joseph of the house of David, the Messiah, was to come from where? The house of David. So he's brought in because of the gene pool, whatever, to fulfill the prophecy. He didn't know all of that. Who would know all of this? But God works behind, behind the scenes, in and around, in ways <coughs> excuse me, that we don't always see or appreciate. But Joseph is then brought into this. And imagine the Christmas story if there were no Joseph. It would be totally different. Who knows what it would be? But he is a unique personality whom God calls to perform a particular mission and purpose in his life. We ought to look at men in the, in the secular world in which we live and men in the religious world. They say today that four out of ten children are born to women Un unmarried women. There is no marriage. Four in ten. Nothing new on one hand, but societally for us, that means that a lot of children don't have fathers. Now that is a societal concern. And this is not to, to get into this sociologically or whatever, or to get into that, but fundamentally, where is the role of the man in our society today? I think very often if you look at media, TV shows, the portrayal of men is not always positive. In some ways, men are portrayed as, uh, they're kind of there, kind of stupid kind of not um, deep. Think of the way we look at men in society that is portrayed to us in the media. Now, we could go around on this, and that's worthy of a conversation among yourselves. How do we think men are supposed to be today? And how, as a young boy growing up without a male influential figure, be it father or not, How's he supposed to grow up to know what a man's supposed to be? How's he supposed to act? What is he supposed to do? Where do, where do adults get this? Where have we gotten it? It's been role modeled to us by others. If you take that influence out of the equation, how do we know how to be? Same applies to women, but in this case, we're talking about men today. Joseph represents that other half. Imagine the role that Joseph had, not just at the birth of Jesus. And by the way, the statues in his church have Joseph holding Jesus. Somebody told me it was at the last mass. I never looked. Shame on me. I look at you, not at the statues. You look at the statues, not at me. Joseph is holding the baby. Mary isn't. Well, that's kind of interesting. Maybe this should be our Christmas card next year. At any rate, think of the influence that Joseph would have had on Jesus in his formative years, with a, of which we know nothing. How did Jesus grow into a, a boy and a teenager, a young adult, and an adult? We kind of give too much credit to his divinity. But how did he learn, humanly speaking, to grow up to be a man? We have to assume Joseph has a very interesting figure and an influence in this on Jesus. And that's, while it's not, there's no historical data here, we have to use our spiritual imaginations from our own experiences of our fathers and men influential in our lives to kind of imagine how this would have happened. But Jesus didn't come in a preconceived package. He grew up humanly speaking. And Joseph had an interesting piece of that action, who eventually taught Jesus that his life 
humanly speaking, would be given for others, not for himself. That's what we need in our lives. We need masculine and feminine role models of generosity. But men also need to know from men that it is appropriate to be people of faith. Over many years, I've heard more, and this is a skewed a little bit, I've heard more family situations where the moms bring the children to church and do religious things, and the children watch their fathers not doing this and saying as they get older, well, why do I have to go if dad doesn't have to go? I think that's a fair question. Why would you, and why do we, why do we force the issue if we don't believe it ourselves? Why are you making your children do something you don't do? That's a wake-up call to the adults. And many times children are given to adults to wake them up about their own lives. But we need both sides of the equation, ideally, in order to grow to the fullness of maturity within the limits of the possible in this life. Joseph represents for us the male approach of to faith. He does not see any more clearly than Mary does at the time of the Annunciation. You and I do not see clearly what is coming next. What's going to be asked of me today or tomorrow in my life? I don't know. All I know, and this is the Christmas message, that wherever you and I are, God will be with us, Emmanuel, where we are, not somewhere else. That's what faith is. I trust that I will never be left alone when I need that help most. None of us are in such control that we don't need that because we, we come up against it sooner or later and more than we would hope that we're not in control of too much in this life. Who is? And how do we find out how he is there for us? That's an ongoing process. The fact of Joseph's righteousness, that he had a history of being a person, a believer, and wasn't just, well, at the last minute, oh, I'm in a quandary here, I better go pray to God for help. The more consistent this is built into our lives, the less we are blown away in the bigger issues. But if I never, never go to God, and then I find myself in trouble or in a quandary, I'm going to automatically get solutions and answers? Not, I don't think. It doesn't work that way. It's the fidelity to the relationship that we need to nurture, where we are privileged, and this is not every case, to have both parents influencing a child, whether they are together or not. That is very important. And today we pray for our fathers and the male faith figures in our lives that they will continue to grow, rise to the occasion, and not be afraid to share that trust and that confidence and teach their children and grandchildren and others that this is not a myth and this is not just for girls and little children, but it is the way of life for the whole human family. Joseph stands before us as a very interesting model whom we can ponder in the way he quietly is to the side but is very much connected to what's going on. God uses his simplicity and his ordinariness to bring about the salvation of the whole world. Each of us is called to be a piece of that action as well. As we come to Christmas then, we in next week it'll be the Holy Family. So we're celebrating all of this. But today we focus on Joseph, preparing for the coming of Christ in the flesh. Mary, obviously, is his mother, his human mother. Joseph is brought in for other purposes, but Joseph is faithful to what is asked of him in his life. We can't ask for any more than that. And the same invitation is offered to you and to me and to all of us. St. Joseph, patron of the Universal Church,